the deputy supervisor for the town of Hempstead. Tell some. 
somebody, praise the Lord, Elder Walter. And I got the most unusual response. It was, you can't be talking to me because I'm going to sell air conditioners and ice water and hell. I said, okay, that's what you think. But God got another plan. Some days he would run from me. I used to be in the payroll office. He used to go as far away from that office as he could. But how many of you know you can run, but you can't? And when you're dealing with God, the only one that believes you running is you. Not even the people around you. The only one believing that you're running is you. Because what God has in store. Ariana told us how big our God is and how big his plans are. And they come to pass. In spite of us. And I give glory to God on today that in spite of your thoughts, he saw your heart and knew his plan. And I thank God, I thank God to actually see the manifestation of God's plan in person. Been some tough days, been some rough roads, but none of that was big enough or bad enough to stop the plan of God. And I give God glory and honor. I, I won't stand here and tell you how much I care about you both because I try to evidence. Because love is an action word, it's not something you have to talk about. So all I can ask is that God bless me to keep loving you. When you need me, I'm going to do my best. I told him, I said, y'all pray for me possible because now that we drive by, it's supposed to be a little more. It's going all the way to Charlotte. But everybody know me. I'm crazy enough to get behind the wheel of a car because you want my heart and just start driving to Charlotte. So that God continue with us in this love walk. I love you both deeply. To God be the glory. Elder Red, and when Elder Red is done, we're going to be preparing to hear the word of God from our Archbishop Hudson. It is a pleasure indeed to be here on today, and I am truly honored to celebrate with my brother. God bless you, Bishop Waldo. Amen. And Lady Waldo, God bless you. We have known each other for a long time, many years, and we work together in ministry in the evangelist department. And uh, I had the pressure, pleasure of uh, sending him to places I couldn't go to. And then they called me back and said, well, can you send him back? <laughs> and they called me to ask me to come back. So I don't know what happened. Uh, but I thank God because he is indeed a man of God. And I appreciate his ministry. And I came here just to let you know that I love you. Amen. And uh, that is a true statement. So, um. Y'all ladies just got through singing. Now it's time for y'all to pray for me, okay? Do that, do that. Give me uh, C sharp, please. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think that in.
I'm here to report to you, he is a healer. He is a keeper. I had six months to live with prostate cancer. And on the 20th of this month, it'll be 31 years. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. Shall we pray, Lord, we look to you. Grace with thanksgiving in our hearts. We bless your name for this day, for this auspicious occasion. We thank you, God, for Bishop and Lady Walter that we break bread with. We even pledge a toast to long life strength, and most of all, your blessings and anointing. But Lord, as I always approach you at this time for me, 
I only ask that you would answer the age-old question. Is there any room uh -huh. from the Lord? Yeah. High Hudson behind the cross. That your people would see less of he, but more of the spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Yeah. Fall afresh in this place upon this people, yeah. upon this word, and upon this vessel. Heal, deliver, and set free through your word. And we shall give you glory. We shall give you honor and praise. For it belongs to you anyway. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And all the people who said the amen. amen. For a few moments, I want to reason with you from God's word. And you can write this down. And I want to use this subject. It's an old song, but it just simply goes like this. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that he or she is traveling wrong, then my gift shall not be in vain. That's the song. But the quick subject is if I can just help somebody. We don't have to argue. We don't have to debate it. I'm not going to even take the time to make your lunch, pre-dinner, give you indigestion. We may not agree on everything, but I think we can all agree on one thing, and that is... We're living in the last and evil days. The word of God is, is being fulfilled even right this very moment. The war, Ukraine and Russia, the pandemic. I just got to telling y'all, we, we got to come back to God and repent. I don't hear that many. And say what you want to make. Too many people is walking around here Passing the buck. Passing the blame. This whole world is just in a bad condition. Yes. The truth be told, baby, it ain't nothing wrong with God's word. Right. When he made heaven and earth, he said, and that's good. That's right. When he made man, he said, and that's very good. So there's nothing wrong with God's word. But can I help you? Yes. The truth of the matter is, it's the people that's in the world. They're the ones that done messed it all up. I was watching on TV and I saw something that every time I see stuff like that, brother, it just makes me get like, you know, I want to cut my TV off or break the screen and go in there and shake folks. Because how are you going to tell me that I've got to accept certain things when my God's word tells me that's an abomination. That's it. Man, right. That's right. Did you catch that dream? Yeah, God don't even like that. And yet you're going to tell me I've got to accept it. Because right. I ain't got no choice in the matter. I can learn to come to my, our church one day and tell me they to hold a meeting. I used to have a monthly uh, politician. They would come and have a clergy breakfast. And they came in there and would try to tell me, said, Bishop, said, all due respects to you, said, but you need to prepare yourself because it's going to be law that you're going to have to marry folks whether you like them or not. I said, I don't actually care anymore if they like me. As long as I counsel them before I marry them, I don't marry nobody no more without counsel. Say amen to somebody. And, and, and you say what you want to me. I, 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 after I counsel them and I tell them what thus says the Lord, then it's really up to them. Because to tell you the truth, some folks tell you now what they don't want you to say it with. Uh, yeah, especially the sisters, they'll tell you the minute, God, grab it, don't put in there, or please don't read in there, obey. Uh, I don't hear that in there. And the word of God done already told me the head of man is God. But the head of all men is man. So now, why are you going to argue with me about what the word of God says again? But then when they told me, they said, well, you're going to have to marry him. I said, I ain't going to have to do nothing. 
but just ready, get ready to go to jail. Because I'm going because I refuse to do certain things. I don't want y'all to know holiness ain't changed. That's right. That's right. Principles of holiness can't change. For the child and children of his word of hell, heaven and earth will pass away. So don't tell me it ain't changed. It ain't changed. God has not changed. I recognize this is a changing world, but I represent an unchangeable God. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So you should be saying, it's the people in the world. Yes, I'm glad you asked. I don't have a robe, so you didn't have to pull on the tail of the robe today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But it's the people in the world. And in my looking at this whole thing, I recognize there are three classes of people. Uh -huh. Three classes. Three. A class that will beat you up. A class that will pass you up. But thank God, that's where Waldo and I come in and you know, and Buck and, and Rick, you know. There's a class that will pick you up. I wish I had a witness right there. I gave you three points, right? You go home and you work on this because I'm ready to get through right now. This man, the subject of our story, was in the right place at the right time. Uh -huh. But he got swell headed. Got a little big for his breeches. God, stay in Jerusalem. The holy place. Yeah. But the scriptures say he left Jerusalem. And he went down the Jericho Road. Now, anything can happen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Well, the first class that he met was the class that beat him up. And the scriptures record, and I'm hurrying right now because I'm ready for my speech. I'm ready for my barbecue chicken. When that first class got it, they tried to beat him to death. And they left him drowning in his own blood. There by the side of the road. Have you ever been beat up in the church? That's one of the worst places to be beat up in. But I'm here to let you know I've been in the church all of my life. Started preaching at a young age. Amen. Started screaming at six and a half years old. And then started trying to preach right at seven years old. Now I can tell you the exact number of seven is that I'm in, and you do the math. Uh -huh. But I'm here to let you know his word ain't changed. Yeah. Right. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. That class that beat that man up and left him dying in his own blood. But all of a sudden, here comes the second class. Yeah. Uh -huh. They were the Levites. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew, whoa, 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 whoa. Church. <laughs> More ants than it is saints now. Isn't it something our churches are lacking praying saints? Back in the days when I came along, and Mother, you don't remember this back then in Holy Trinity, they made us pray through. I mean, when old man Ethan, old man Frank Clemens, and old man Frank Cook. Amen. An old man, uh, James Gaylord, an old man, F.D. Washington, an old man, Nathaniel Townley Sr., my bishop. When they call a prayer vigil, they didn't ask you what you had to do. They told us what we were going to do. And when they called the fast, we have no choice in the matter. We pack a bag and go to work. I don't hear nothing in here. Go to prayer until midnight. And then they'd allow us to get a little nap in. Mm -hmm. But at one o'clock, a bell was being ringed. Right. Time to go back to prayer. Yeah. That went on all night long. Yeah. I wish I had a witness in the house. Yeah. Pray through until, until six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then that old Baptist, Baptist, hard shell, Baptist church I went to 51 years ago, but when they didn't allow you to even call prayer. Deacons didn't have no word. Trustees had all the power. 
kicked me out after the church burned up because God had to burn it up so that I would become in charge of his house. And after it burned up, then we rebuilt a new church. To this very hour, I still don't have a mortgage. Never had to pay a bank. Oh, because what God says is done. And it's well done. I wish I had a witness. And yet, say it to the man. In that old Baptist church, I called an all night prayer. While we were building, we had burned up. And some of the old saints of St. Mark came over and stayed with me all night long. And every hour on the hour, we had prayer. Then the Lord gave me a good old church mother that went by the Baptist church but didn't stay but a half minute. But when she got to me, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't let her stay there with me in being dead and dry and dead. Oh, no, 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 no. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And at 6 o'clock, Mother Harris would say, Good morning, my Lord. Good morning to my Lord. And we said, Oh, Lord, here we go, Mother Harris. That means if you were sleeping, you better wake yes. up. She ain't going to be satisfied if she come around all around and lay her hands on you and say, wake up! We've got to talk to the Lord one more time. Yes. And you know what? We've gotten away from that. Yes. Those were the principles of all of our churches. Yes. Prayer and fasting and fasting yes. and prayer. Yes. Uh, I was taught, let us all go back to the old landmark. Yes. And we'll stay in the service of the Lord. Let us kneel and pray in the old time. Yes. Then we'll stay in the service yes. of the Lord. But some of those folks, just like we got them now, back in that day, instead of them seeing the man dying and in blood, they pass. I have on my white dress for communion. That's it. I want my white dress on with some innocent person. I don't know. You may have anything. He's bleeding. And the word says that they pass by on the other side. First class beat him. Second class passed him. But then, thanks be unto God, there came a Michael Warren. Wait a minute, Bishop, he wasn't living back in there, but God saw him coming. Uh -huh. I wish I had a witness in him. God saw Michael Waldo coming. What? To the kingdom. For such a time as this. Uh -huh. Say what you will of me, it's a shame to say it. But I went to God that as they're calling every other kind of meeting and every other kind of session. Yeah. And every other kind of this and the that and that and this. When is anybody going to call a worldwide day of nothing but prayer? If my people, which are called by my name, will just humble themselves and pray. See my face. I wish I had a witness in here. From their wicked ways. <laughs> I got tired of, of them saying that so much. When the pandemic started, they said, they said, Jesus said, <laughs> and the word of God said, if my people <laughs> would you call me by my name. <laughs> I thought about some of them that were saying red. <laughs> and I said, what are you saying? <laughs> Who have you been called by? <laughs> Who do you say that you are? <laughs> to know who we are, and then we need to recognize whose we are, and then recognize why am I here, and what is my purpose, and I got a witness in here, the day has come, but it's not about organizations, I graduated in greater friendship assembly, worldwide, and I told them three years ago, it's no more an organization. But we have become, and we must become, a living organism. Have I got a witness here? Lord, it's calling for somebody, somebody, somebody. Like Waldo, and Red, and Kendall, and Old Butler, and even Hudson. If you want somebody, here am I. Oh, he's calling for somebody that is willing to 
I ain't got no rivers right there. I want to That's it. Me. There's a river now that it. needs to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. I want souls. Yeah. I don't care where they come from. I just want to know what they accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Make him Lord of their life. Yeah. Is there one today before I take my seat? Let me pray the prayer of faith. That the Lord will take care of the rest. Say that. Say that. I think just about everybody in here now that just about finished your chicken and pork man. Amen. Barbecue chicken. All I need to do. And I hope the fish didn't swallow up the river. And I did request for a piece of it to stop by and sit with that. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I need all of you that's just like me. I need more Jesus. I need more prayer. In fact, I need God to anoint me afresh every day. Beloved, I hope y'all know we are not grasping against flesh and blood. That's it. Principalities in high places. Spiritual wickedness. I, I've never seen such a real outrage of witch, witchcraft. All this mess right in our churches. And in holiness church, they have really got, them demons have really got bold. But I get sick of folks coming to me talking about, you know, I know the Lord too. Well, I want to know how well do you know him? Stuck up in pride. Pride goes before a fall. That's right. But if you are like me and you need more of him, you need understanding that it's through your praying and staying before him. Give God a way walk. You ain't got to get up. You know, need to digest your food. But if you bow your head and humble your heart. Humble your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, this word that you try to deliver to your people, I pray God that you will, don't let it fall on stony ground. Let it get into the hearts of men and women. That they may be able to be better servants to thee and for thee. Thank you, Lord, again for this occasion. Thank you, God, for your servant, Waldo, and his precious wife. You know, Lord, everything that we need, give it to us. And we ask it in faith, believing you declare it. In Jesus' name, clap those hands and give it to us. We have to help somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for the free place of the Lord. Using him. Amen. Does everybody have enough to eat today? All right. We got this. So the word and yeah. off some chicken, amen. Fish is another thing, amen. We're just so grateful. As we move forward in our program, we do have a couple of uh, presentations and some more conversations. We want to get into that as we continue to move through our service. At this time, we're going to ask that our Apostle Muhammad come and have some words, amen. To our bishop. Let's receive it right now with hearty amen.
uh, they're disappointed or they're grieving over what didn't happen. But I'm so grateful to the Lord for what he is doing. And he is still making a way out of nowhere. He is still blessing and keeping them. When I came in here, I know we were supposed to eat something, but my request of the Lord was to let me see their joy. And when I came in, I wasn't here for too long. And then all of a sudden, I, I was invited into the praises with everyone. And I watched the Lord settle on them. And I watched them give, get up and give God praise. And I watched First Lady get up and give God praise. And then in her role, just try to come down and escort and to comfort someone else as they praise. But as soon as one praise touched the other praise, then I saw all of them begin to praise, and then all of us were able to go up. And because that had happened, I was too full to eat because my request had been answered by God. So I'm so grateful. There's so many things that are happening in the world. There's lots of churches you have to touch people and pastors that love you near and far. But if the joy can remain, that's it. That's it. I'm so grateful to the Lord that he continues to stir up the joy within us. Yeah. And he surprises us by who he says we are. And then he makes us become that. Yeah, right. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, to our bishop, we thank God for him. Uh, his spirit, Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Uh, when he's finished with our pastor Loretta, is coming to have words. Amen. 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 Bless you, Pastor. Thank God for Amen. Praise the Lord for everyone that is here to your grace. Amen. Bishop Long, we back to your grace. Amen. It's possible that you thank you, Hunter. Amen. Amen. Your Excellency. You see how many people are right here? Amen. Bishop Butler. And to all of those, amen, that are here. Lady, amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And for this great fellowship uh, today. I do, listen, when they called us about this, uh, this, this date, we had the state was marked already. I was actually did not ask you. I said, it was very quick. And all of a sudden, within the last several weeks, we had three more invitations on the June 4th. I said, oh, wait a minute. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. But we made it. 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 And I told my wife this morning, I said, let's get up. No, we had to go. Amen. But thank God that we are here. Amen. To celebrate. Amen. And as Apostle was talking, the great thing about this ministry, the great thing about this ministry that is planted, it's already planted. So whenever, amen, Bishop has to go down, he's already planted. Amen. I see the young, amen, his family, amen, is taking over. I'm telling you, amen, this generation is set, amen, for the next, amen, wave of, amen, uh, uh, believers that will come on, y'all, gee, y'all, say, amen, that's going to do something, amen, great in the earth. I look at, amen, apostle, and, and I'm telling you, it's good to see destiny, the journey. I'm still in journey, sir, but it's so great to see Amen. Destiny. All the times you would come over and minister. And I mean, just to sit in the show. You know, right now, right, Pastor? Just to be able to say, Amen. We actually had a chance. Amen. But we used to see you come there and dance. And, 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 and listen, I don't think dancing was ever really. Amen. A dance until you seen Apostle Hudson dance. Amen. I don't know if it was the Hucklebuck or whatever. But he used to come there and have a wonderful time. Amen. Thank God. And to see now journey and destiny together, it's absolutely wonderful. But I want to give, amen, just honor to amen, this great man of God. No, come on. I, I, I'm saying it for so many different reasons. God planted him in the earth, amen, and he was in security at the schools and taught the young folks and oh, you you were already talked about before you even came and then we know who you was with man. Bishop Davenport. And to see that you came, amen, such a great way and have always been humble. I don't know if y'all know how humble, I mean how it is, amen, just to have a spirit of humbleness in these days and time. That means to be humble, and he's always been humble. Never be a man. It was never a man about him, and he just so love. His love always amplified, amen, something that was great. So we are here just to celebrate you, amen, to celebrate, amen, First Lady. We thank God. I remember, I'm going to get out of the way. I, I love her testimony more than anybody else. When she said, 
how she used to go to church with the children. Uh -huh. See how I used to listen? Amen. Go to church with the kids. You used to go with them, get up to the door, turn back around. Yeah. Yeah. But she finally got trained. Yeah. I remember that story. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, you know what that tells us? Tell us somebody, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Ain't nothing too hard for God. We celebrate you, man, and woman of God. We love you. God bless you.
See, because when you left me, he go, if y'all had to stay when you left me at, he go, you do come to see, you come to view me, not see me. And but I thank God. I thank God for Bishop Walder or Lady Walder, amen. They know it from my heart, amen. Whatever we can do, we gotta do, amen. I'm excited about abundant blessings. I'm excited about a kingdom connection. I'm about to excited about going to tell the world that no matter what you're going through, God is still able. Yes, he is able to do all things. There are so many things that people are going, oh, medical marijuana, and you can do this and you can do that. But what about Jesus? I remember, like you said, we have to be on our knees praying. Is everybody here with me? I always like to lead off with the 34th Psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be in our mouth. We do give honor to the Lord that is in the house on today. Amen. We give honor to Archbishop. Amen. Mitchell Hudson, come on, give honor. Apostle Kendall. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The former co-worker and colleague in ministry. Amen. Yeah. Bishop David Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Kids used to act the over there at the ISA. I be about to do my job. And he'd teach it, but he's right there with me. <laughs> he was right there with me. I thank God for my apostle. Amen. Muhammad. Amen. Yeah. Yes, amen. amen to my brother, amen, over there, Bishop Alec, amen, River, God bless you, amen, 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 you know what we do when we do that, I'm definitely going to be there for that, amen, we thank God for this great woman of God, also sitting behind Bishop Butler, amen, to all those, if, 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 that, if I didn't call you out, amen, to all those wives, do, amen, amen. I, I just want to say, I want to thank God for one who God has given me a connection with. Amen. Even though I am not in the Poconos, I'm here in New York, headed to North Carolina. But God has given me a connection. Amen. To Pastor Loretta. Amen. The one thing I like about God and how He has done with me in ministry, He has surrounded me with great women. With great women, amen, to give me guidance a lot of times. A lot of times people say, no, I need some great men. No, I grew up in a household full of women. <laughs> and, and it was my grandmother, amen, yeah. who guided me a lot of times. Yeah. You know, most men, they, that's what they, they always talk about grandma. Talk about mom and talk about grandma. Dad, we talk a little bit about. But we always know that uh, most of the wisdom that we got, we got because mom was still within us. And she helped us. So I thank God for Pastor Loretta because she is ears and eyes for me in many cases. Amen. Right along with my wife. And I hate when the two of them get together. <laughs> because when the two of them get together, somebody in trouble. <laughs> somebody in trouble. Because I may be shaking your hands up and not some nice things. But as soon as I'm finished, they grab me to the side and say, mm-mm, the devil is alive. <laughs> and they will call you out in a minute. Amen. So we thank God. I am truly happy. You see, he gave me a tissue. You know, because I've been crying a whole lot. Especially after Elder Red came in and tore up the place. Amen. 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 He came Amen. in and tore up the place. Amen. I used to do evangelism with Elder Red. He was the president for the first jurisdiction evangelist department, and I was the vice president. Mm. And many times, because he was out ministering and preaching, because he was his dad's assistant. He could go on a lot of assignments. So he would send me out there, especially when he came to ministering out in the streets. Wow. He would send me and over in Bed-Stuy and Brownsville and up in Hall and different places. He said, I need somebody to go out into the streets for me. He says, and I know that that's what you do. And I would go out there into the streets, uh, as he said, high in hedges, to compel them to come. And I would go out there, it didn't matter what gang was out there, it didn't matter what drug gang it was, I was going in there. And people, and some of those preachers that were with me who were afraid to go over there, they were, how you gonna go up in there, man? I said, because that's where I came from. Wow. Sometimes you got to remember where the Lord delivered us from. We forget where God delivered us from. 
and we act like we don't know the people outside. Because we come inside, they'll close the door many times. Right. And when we do go outside, we walk on the other side of the street. No, I don't want to walk on the other side of the street. I want to walk on their side so I can say, how you doing? That's right. right. That's right. That's why I believe that, you know, I make a big difference over a lot of others. Because yeah. I'm not afraid of people out here. I'm not afraid to do this. I wasn't afraid when I wasn't saved. Right. So I'd be afraid now. That's right. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Especially since I said I got God with me. If, if God be for you, who will you? So I don't have a problem with it. What they did for me today, it definitely brought tears to my eyes because it was excellent. It was excellent. My son, amen, Pastor Maurice, amen. He, he'll be pastor in this church, uh, I believe, on the 17th. I'll be here in North Carolina to open up another church there. Yeah. And my other son is already waiting for me in Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. We're going to take our ministry there. And then August come, I'll be headed to Georgia. Wow. And Elder Grimes, amen, who serves as my chief adjutant, he's going to be pastoring the church that's going to take out in Georgia in August. Oh, man. Yeah, good, good. We'll be back here in September for the church anniversary, 10 years anniversary. Amen. Then we're going to take a little break because in 2023, I'll be headed to South Carolina mm. to go open up the church in South Carolina Amen. And, and get prepared over there. I still been passionate about getting prepared for one that I'm going to put over there. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Sandy. Amen. I already told her that. You see, she, uh, she keeps looking at me like, what you talking about? See, I understand when God puts money in. A lot of, one thing we learn is that God always gives a student, not just to stay in the class, but for promotion. Yes. Amen. 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 And she's been with me a long time. Amen. God has blessed her to be here with me. She knows me. She knows what to do. And uh, she's going to be going to South Carolina anyway. Amen. To be with her husband over there. So her husband already said he's going to be my deacon. Oh. He already told me, Bishop, he already told me that he said, I'm going to be the deacon. And he said, look, I'm, I'm only coming to church one time uh, a day on that day. I said, no problem. I said, because it's only going to be one service that will be intermission of it. He got to get back. I told me it will be an intermission, but it's going to be one service. Yeah. 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 We come in after after the intermission. That, that's how that works. Which I'm preparing for South Carolina, and then the last one that the Lord has given me will be in Alabama. Amen. Those are the five churches that the Lord has talked to me about. This church and those churches that are there. And they're going to see what God has to say to me. The Bible just said that man that desired the. Office of the bishop desire to and do it. And see, I like to work. I like to work that God knew what he could get from me. So I'm going to be going to open those churches and taking them out, coming around to the church. Plus, um, as a new fellowship, yes, we will be out there accepting other churches to come into the fellowship. And what one thing I would say to the bishop is that this fellowship, like as we have said, not like everyone else. We're not here for money. We're not here for, for uh, fame and fortune. Right. We're here to do outreach and to do what God has called for us amen, to do. Amen, amen. And that's why it's not for everybody. So, so pastors are going to come and say that they're going to want to join, but they're going to find out that actually joining us, you have to work. That's right. right. That's right. And it's not that I'm asking you to do something that I'm not going to do. That's right. Because one of the first three people you're going to see at Pastor Bell will tell you, uh, or actually do something, will be me. When I met Pastor Bell, she told me what she was doing. She said she was feeding them up there in the broken house. I did not gave her money. Amen. Amen. See, if you're going to be with me, I'm going I'm to supply what you need Amen. to make sure that everything is taken care of. So I gave her I gave her hundred dollars at that time. Amen. And then we uh, and she was able to do what she needed to do up there. Amen. On July 9th, we'll be going up there into the broken house, taking clothes up there. Amen. And we're doing a two-day camp meeting. Amen. Up in the book, and those over near the homeless encampment. Amen. Mm. We're going to, and yours truly is going. Amen. 
Amen. Anything all I'm doing, I'm going. Amen. I will be up there because I'll be speaking on that Saturday. 